Miss Scarlet in the library with the candlestick. We all love a good murder mystery, don't we? And the best murder mystery movie series right now is undoubtedly Knives Out. The second movie in the series, The Glass Onion, seems to have disappeared. It's like the perfect mystery. It was here for a week in the theaters on Thanksgiving Day, and then it disappeared. And it will disappear until December 23rd when Netflix releases it from its it's hidden prison and fans and the director Ryan Johnson are not super happy about it. So is this the case of Netflix truly trying to kill theaters or is it something else? Because theaters have taken a beating in the last few years due to the pandemic and a lot of us in Hollywood worry that the theaters are going to die one day. But in doing my research, I discovered that theaters are hardy and hard to kill. Take the invention of the television, people thought movie theaters would die then, or the invention of the VHS. Again, theaters have survived. And then came the big streamers. Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Apple. Are they going to finally kill watching movies in theaters? I don't know. I don't think so. I think that those of us in Hollywood have been watching the evolution and the organic growth of the streamers, but every bubble bursts, right? Look at Netflix. It has had unstoppable growth for over 10 years. And yet here we are in 2022, they had a bad year. Their growth has slowed. They've lost a lot of subscribers. And now they are actually allowing their movies to go for theatrical runs. Now the Glass Onion is really interesting because it had the biggest run that Netflix has ever had for any of its movies. It had 600 theaters. Now, when we say wide release, wide release means at least 2,000 theaters. But what was different about Glass Onion here is that they actually went to the three big theatrical outlets, right? They went to AMC, Cinemark, and Regal. And in the past, they have not. Now, in this New York Times interview that Ryan Johnson gave, he states the fact that he's not very happy with the fact that they only had a one-week run. Now, is he showing some regret that he sold the rights to his second and third movie to Netflix? Maybe, but you know what? The $465 million that he received from Netflix probably makes him less than willing to complain about it. But he does complain a little bit about it in the New York Times article. Because I think if you read between the lines, it sounds like Netflix could have let the movie have a bigger run if they wanted to. Why should you subscribe to a creator? Well, it actually really does help us. It helps grow our channel. It helps the mysterious YouTube algorithm understand that we have a channel that actually gives value. And for me, teaching and giving value is really important. So please consider subscribing. It really does support my new channel. So this New York Times article is really interesting because Ryan Johnson is very transparent and he talks about basically admitting that he regrets the deal that he made with Netflix. But he talks about his reasonings for accepting the Netflix offer. Now realize after the first Knives Out movie came out and was such a success, I mean, I love that movie. It was so fun. I mean, Daniel Craig is just amazing as Benoit. So he had had the chance to basically be the bell of the ball, right? There was a bidding war, all these different studios and streamers wanted him. And Ryan decided that going with a streamer at the time, which was March, 2021, the theaters were sort of dying. And at the same time, the big studios were flipping a lot of their movies to the streamers. So it actually made sense for him that Netflix being a streamer and probably made the highest offer was very attractive. Now, Netflix has for those of us in Hollywood has the reputation, right? And they probably really love being called the potential theater killer. When they came out, they were like, this is our business. We're going to be streamers all across the board. And they actually never allow their movies to be in the theaters. A lot of directors and big time actors will require in their contracts, right? Either for the rights or for the directing services or for their acting services that there be a theatrical run. 
because what people don't realize is in order to qualify for an Academy Award, you have to be in the theaters. And if you're not in the theaters, then you won't qualify. So I think for directors like Ryan Johnson, it's very important that the movies have a theatrical run. And also directors at their core, so many of them grew up, you know, loving going to the theaters. It is an emotional experience that you can't replace at home. Ryan Johnson says, hopefully next time we will be in the theaters longer. I think he's going looking forward to his third movie, which Netflix also owns the rights to. I think this next run, he will say, you know, we need a longer theatrical run. And it's not that easy, right? Let's say Netflix had agreed for a longer theatrical run here. It's not like you can just go to the theaters and say, well, we want the next two weeks. Although, you know, there is a dearth. There is a starvation right now happening to the theaters. There just isn't enough content. I believe there's a third less movies now being sold to the theaters than there was pre-pandemic. So Netflix's position is, well, it's not so easy to just go into the theaters and to ask for a few more weeks. But I actually think that's not true. I bet if they went to AMC or Regal or Cinemark right now, they would take it because the only other movie that's really playing right now is Wakanda Forever. And that's great. But what happens to the movie lover that has already seen it? What else are they going to see? You know, I know all of us are waiting for Avatar 2 to come out, but that doesn't come out until I think December 23rd. So why was Netflix so reluctant to have a longer theatrical run? Its co-chief executive Reed Hastings said, well, we're not trying to create a theatrical business here. We really are a streaming business. We allowed a theatrical run to break through the noise. And what was interesting here is they actually gave a more traditional marketing campaign than they normally did, which also means more money. They had these really cool posters that people on Twitter were having lots of fun, you know, moving the letters around. But I think this experiment with Glass Onion shows that people are starved to be next to each other again. You know, Ryan Johnson talks about how he popped into different theaters in New York and LA when it was having its run during that week. And, you know, the excitement and the fun and just the energy of being next to other people in a movie theater is magical. I mean, that's what created Hollywood that I'm so lucky to be a part of for the last 15 years. It really does feel like you're in the presence of magicians when you get swept away into a world that you don't even realize the escape that you're in. You know, Ryan Johnson talks about the fact that when you are writing like a whodunit mystery, right? How do you stop the audience from spending all their time trying to figure out who did it? Well, he says you make them forget they're actually trying to solve a mystery because they're having so much fun. I mean, I personally did not see the movie yet because I missed it. I missed that train just like I missed the Taylor Swift tickets, but I hope to catch it when it's out on streaming. Now, maybe Netflix is right. I mean, this has created a lot of excitement because when you are not able to have something that you really want, you want it more. And so people are really anticipating this movie coming out on Netflix on December 23rd. So maybe Netflix's plan to make people more excited, maybe even to get some new subscriptions has worked with this movie. So stay tuned because I am I'm thinking about doing a video about sort of the state of Hollywood in terms of streamers and theaters. I actually thought earlier in the year maybe Netflix is really going to, I don't know about dying, but Netflix has taken a big hit. The magical pinnacle place that it held for the last 10-15 years has crumbled a little bit as its subscription base has declined. Five, seven, eight years ago, half of the legal industry was disrupted because Netflix went around hiring everybody. I mean, I actually got my job at Skydance because they courted away one of the attorneys from there and they went ahead and paid everybody double what was market, right? Like there was a time when everyone wanted to work at Netflix and I want to do a video kind of doing a more deep dive on Netflix, on streamers, on the kind of future of studios because I used to work at Disney and so I have a lot of insight into all the different types of companies there are in Hollywood. Make sure to catch my latest video on the whole Balenciaga scandal and lawsuit here. This is Tyler. Remember, you were born perfect and we all have just forgotten that. I'll see you guys later. Bye.